Hi there, in this video, we're going to talk all about the Shure 81. Check it out. So Ross, I think the first thing that I want to start out with is saying that, you know, this is the 81, but there's also a very similar looking transmitter, the ADX1. And just to make sure uh, we know the differences about them before we continue. Yeah, in classic Sure fashion, uh, one character in the part <laughs> number can, can mean a very Shoot. big difference. So, right? um, yes, they're, these are both Axion digital transmitters, meaning they both can sync to any Axion digital receiver. Now, an AD1, like all AD series transmitters, is a traditional one-way street. RF is being transmitted from, in this case, the body pack transmitter to the receiver. All ADX transmitters are what we call show link enabled, meaning they can receive a 2.4 transmission back to the transmitter over the show link access point, the AD610. In this way, I can have remote control of all settings on an ADX transmitter from a remote location. An AD transmitter, the AD1, I sync it up to my receiver, uh, it's, it's on air, it is transmitting, and that's great. Same audio quality, same wideband tuning range, same dynamic range. Uh, so generally speaking, the end result is going to be the same from an AD transmitter to an ADX1. But this one, it's on the talent and the talent walks away. If I need to adjust the setting, I gotta go get an AD transmitter, resync it, or, or adjust the setting on the transmitter itself. Um, that is a very important difference from an AD1 to an ADX1. So in that case, it generally just comes down to workflow. You know, if your workflow puts you into a situation where you're gonna have to put the transmitters on the talent and then let them go and you're not gonna be able to touch them again, maybe it's gonna go on some uh, basketball player and they're gonna go out and you can't touch them for two or three hours or however long the game is, and then they come back, that is what it is. Now, if you're not under, under those extraneous circumstances, maybe the 81 is for you. Absolutely. So uh, one other little distinction is the ADX series of transmitters will all come with their own Shure lithium ion rechargeable battery. That is the battery you must use with your ADX transmitter. Your AD1 or your AD2, if we're talking about handheld transmitters, or AD3 if we're talking plug-on transmitter, standard AA batteries will work, or there is a uh, lithium-ion rechargeable battery as well, the SB900B, that is compatible with all AD series transmitters. So AA's out of the box or separate SB900B. Excellent. So when we talk about Shure digital wireless transmitters, we definitely need to talk about Spectrum. What can you tell me about how this operates in the UHF Spectrum? Well, uh, an AD transmitter, and in fact, all Axion digital transmitters are wideband. So what is remaining of the UHF band is what you get. Every receiver, every transmitter is wideband, 470 to 616. And if you need to get creative and you know what you're doing and can use the duplex gap or the guard bands within the 600 megahertz spectrum, we have the ability to do that as well. You might need to call your, your friendly neighborhood True Audio Associate and, and talk through some of the details there because those are specialized areas of the UHF band, but the standard UHF spectrum is available to you with all Axion digital transmitters. Excellent. What about the microphone input on the 81? What can you tell me about that? So uh, Shure standard, we're going to use a TA4 style connector that is compatible with all Shure lavaliers and headsets. And then we will also offer a three pin Limo option as well. Now, I know that we just talked about the battery requirements for this, but one thing I'm noticing is the battery terminals that are on the back. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yep, so you've got a couple of different options for charging. If you have gone with the, with the rechargeable battery option, you can either take the battery out and there's a couple of different uh, like desktop style chargers like an SBC 800 for eight batteries by themselves, or there's a rack mount option, an SBRC Sure battery rack mount charger. Uh, and then you can put some modules in to accommodate up to eight SB900Bs. Or if you prefer, you can get an SBC 200 and dock the transmitter itself with the battery in. That automatically RF mutes the output so you're no longer transmitting and you will charge and then once you pull the transmitter off if it's left powered on it's on and ready to use again excellent
another incredible transmitter in the Sure Axient digital wireless lineup. Can you tell us a little bit more about the entire ecosystem? Sure, so we've got under Axient Digital, we have three different receiver options, the AD4D dual channel rack mount receiver, AD4Q four channel rack mount, ADX5D dual channel portable show link enabled receiver, and then we have the AD610, which we showed a second ago. That is the dedicated show link access point for controlling your ADX transmitters. We've got the AD1, 2, and 3 body pack, handheld, and plug-on transmitter. And then we've got the ADX1, ADX1M micro, and ADX2 handheld style transmitter in the ADX family. Incredible. So Shure has a, a variety of digital transmission wireless systems like the AD1 here, and then also all of the X versions that allow you to uh, allow it to be controlled via the show link. Yes. Incredible. Well, if you guys are interested in the AD1 or any of the Shure Axient digital wireless lineup, take a look at our products at trueaudio.com.